to a special Red Friday edition of the Power of Pro Wrestling, the podcast by wrestling fans for wrestling fans. This is Robert Red. And I'm Corbin Chris Heineken. Thank you so much for joining us on this mm, after Thanksgiving on this, I'm not going to say it, Black Friday. Speaking of Thanksgiving, how was yours, my friend? Well, mine was good, and uh, this ain't a Black Friday because it's our podcast. This is a Red Friday. Exactly. Hey, so, but my Thanksgiving was very good. I got to hang out with family and stuff like that. Got to see a lot of my cousins that I don't get to see very often, and I... Uh, for people who don't know a whole lot about me, family is obviously something important. But I, important. I mean, I had fun. I went to our local Walmart and it was packed like crazy. We literally had to park across the street. So it was quite the interesting Thanksgiving. So how was yours, Mr. Uh, Heineken? Well, technically, I'll sum it up. I got drunk off of a sweet tea and I ended up smoking turkey and the ham was a little bit. A little bit too much for me. Yeah, right. yeah. You're the only Puerto Rican I know that gets drunk off uh, sweet tea or Mountain Dew or whatever you got have. That, got that right. Yeah. Right. Coming up in today's podcast, well, we'll discuss TNA Destination America. Possibility? Yes. Possibility? No. Also, we'll talk about Sting in this podcast, and we'll talk about uh, a little change in SmackDown. But we must begin with Survivor Series. Of course, this is one of the biggest Survivor Series ever because it paid Team Cena versus Team Authority in the main event. Let's get to it. What are your thoughts, my friend, on yeah. Survivor Series? Well, I mean, uh, well, Survivor Series, as you know, has always been a Thanksgiving uh, week tradition or Thanksgiving Day tradition. And the show up to the main event was obviously good. There were some segments I would kind of scratch in my head of why did they do it that way. But, I mean, I enjoyed it. The Fatal 4-Way tag match was on there. And I want to kind of see what all happened. So, uh, the Diva Survivor Series uh, elimination match was good. Uh, the Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose, I was kind of scratching my head with the DQ victory by Bray Wyatt, but I understand why they did it. Uh, they throw in the Adam Rose bunny match, Slater and Gator, that wasn't bad. And then the Divas title match, I was kind of scratching my head on too, Ooh, with a quick win by Nikki Bella to become the new Divas champion. So kind of what, what what's your thoughts, Mr. Heineken, leading up to the main event? Well, uh, well, I will say two title changes. The two title changes, one was surprising, one was none surprising. The one that was surprising was... Obviously, the tag titles. Miz and Miz down. Oh, gosh. Yeah, wow. I enjoyed that as well. That as was, hilarious that was, that was as good. that was. That was hilarious. And, of course, the Diva Survivor Series, I'm stunned just for the clean sweep effect. I'm stunned on that. I never thought it would happen. I at least thought it would at least be three or four, at least remaining. But the fact it was a clean sweep, it was surprising. Stunning. My head kind of shook a little bit on the Bray Wyatt Dean Ambrose deal, but I kind of understand why they had to try to build to the next pay per view coming up December the 14th. Um, you have to have a filler match, and your only filler match had to be Adam Rose and the Bunny versus Slater Gator. Well, for you Omega Sci Fi um, guys, you guys get the get the deal there, but a little bit almost a stunned deal concerning Nikki Bella and AJ Lee as far as the uh, hmm, WrestleMania Rewind case went for AJ Lee. But obviously another title change. And then, of course, this one cannot be ignored. Team Cena, Team Authority. Wow. Cannot be ignored. I mean... Yeah, you're 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 kind of being left uh, lost for words for this one, aren't you, well, Mister Reporter? A whole lot of questions. I mean, a whole lot of questions come out of that one, especially, you know, not just with the Triple H knocking out the refs, but with the whole sting factor. Yeah, and I mean, I enjoyed the main event since we we're talking about it. It was great. Hey, for uh, I did a video on this, so I'm going to cheap plug it on my YouTube channel, and I discussed kind of my thoughts and predictions going into Survivor Series, and I was uh, pulling, well, not necessarily pulling for the authority, but I thought for storyline purposes that the authority should win, because like I know we talked off uh, this podcast, as I kind of presented why I said the authority should win, is if you remember about this time last year, if you uh, read any like wrestling uh, related news and stuff like that where it was behind the scenes it was rumored that there was going to be a power struggle between Vince McMahon and Triple H going into Wrestlemania well that same kind of ideal was more tangible 
this season with the whole Vince McMahon coming back a few weeks ago and making the Survivor Series match mean a little bit more with Team Authority if they lost, them going out of power, and then Triple H just the SmackDown before, he made it to where everyone but Cena on Team Cena, if they lost, would get fired. So to me, A, for a good storyline, let the Authority win, have Team Cena get fired all but John Cena, and then you could have Vince McMahon a week or two later come out back on Raw like, no, no, uh-uh, that's not going down, bring everybody back, and then that would really set up for the power struggle for WrestleMania. And set up for a good match uh, between Triple H and someone representing Vince McMahon, and he could obviously get his big payday match. So I that's kind of why I wanted the Team Authority to win. But, I mean, I'm not upset with Team Cena because as you still could go that way, and we'll talk about more about this in the next segment about well, – well, happened overall, but go ahead and I, I, I think I think the big I think there were big three big winners out of this whole situation. John Cena, of course, because one, regardless, he still is the number one contender to the world championship. Seth Rollins. Granted, authority may have broken up, but he's m- Mr. Money in the bank. But here's the X factor out of all of this, and that's Dolph Ziggler. He for him to go three against one. And still managed to survive that whole attack. Multiple attacks, even with a little bit of help from an unnamed source named Sting. I think that really helped the case, but you, you got to give props to Dolph Ziggler regardless. You got to. Yeah, most definitely. And I was pleasantly surprised it came down to Dolph Ziggler and the authority. And that kind of made me think that they were going to let the authority win because Dolph Ziggler, or just in a history of storylines, they buried him. And for him to get that Cena-like comeback, that superhuman comeback, and beat all three guys with that uh, with uh, Sting coming out and helping them. But here's the question. Here's the question I pose to you. Do you think a lot of people would have figured that Cena would have been in the final two? I definitely uh, think that's uh, where a lot of people would have uh, said, me included, that they expected just John Cena to be in that role and have that big Super Cena Especially come back and beat three guys. Yeah, on pay-per-view. So I'm pleasantly surprised I went to Dolph Ziggler. And this, uh, if you go back and listen to one of our old podcasts, uh, we discussed the question about WWE should stop relying on their established stars and stuff like that and start making new talent. And that seems to be what they're doing with Dolph Ziggler, especially getting a big win like that. Uh, but I think the big monkey in the room that you've mentioned uh, a few times, and I've touched on uh, too, the debut of Sting in a WWE ring. Do you think this had a major impact on the Survivor Series buy? And how do you think this is going to make an impact going forward on I WWE? Think it did. I think it did. I think for the fact that since WWE's only pay-per-view reliance was Dish Network and local cable subscribers, especially for fifty four ninety five, of which you're charging for three hours, I think that could have been the blow that literally saved them just for pay-per-view alone. If it was WWE Network, hey, granted, I, I'm tuning in Monday night. And that's what you want to do. You want to, if you're making people pay this amount of, much amount of money, you want to give them their money's worth. Give them the shock factor, as we would say. A little bit like what TNA did when they did their Wednesday night pay-per-views. None but shocks and surprises. You don't know what's going to happen next. WWE hit a home run here, especially with Sting. So I have to say that, to me, that really, really helped save them. Well, right quick before we go to a commercial break, what was kind of your reaction with the debut of Sting and stuff like that? Kind of were you surprised, shocked? I mean, what was kind of your initial reaction seeing Sting walk out to the WWE ring? Because, I mean, we literally saw history in the making because he was the last piece of the puzzle. He's the last guy from WCW who was a big threat to WWF at the time, WWE now, in the 90s, going into the 2000s, and in the Monday Night War. So, I mean, he's obviously, it was history in the making we saw Saturday night, or Sunday night, excuse me, at Survivor. So what was your reaction? History in the making, indeed. Um, I'll be real. I never thought I would see it. I would see it happen. I I, I honestly didn't. Granted, I knew something was going to happen in the future, but knowing WWE, some, certain, you never know what strange deals could happen. So I was completely shocked. Okay, yeah, and I was pleasantly surprised as well, but that's all the time we have for this segment. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back after this. 
Hi everyone, I'm Chris Heineken. And I'm Robert Red, And we are the host of the Power of Pro Wrestling Podcast, PPWP. The wrestling podcast for the wrestling fans. We're currently looking for sponsors. If you or your business is interested in sponsorship for this podcast, you can contact us via email at jonesboroughwrestling at gmail.com. That's jonesboroughwrestling at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. So just chill out, enjoy the show, and thanks. Hello, everyone. This is Robert Red. I'm Chris Honigan. And, and our show can be heard on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. Download the free app today. You can listen anytime and anywhere. Stitcher is a world running free app that lets you listen to all your favorite shows. Plus, discover from 20,000 news, entertainment, and sports shows. You can even create custom playlists. Over 20,000 shows to discover. You can write and review the show on Stitcher. Also available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. And along with that, it is in 4 million car dashboards. And it's on demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, and no wasted memory. Stream your favorite podcast. Well, if you don't have Stitcher, you can download it free today at Stitcher.com or in your app store. And we're back with the Power of Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is still Robert Red, And I'm still Cornbread Chris Honigan. We sincerely appreciate you guys being here with us on this awesome podcast. Well, normally this would be our very first segment of the show. But since we already did Survivor Series, let's get on down the Raw Impact Smackdown. Let's kick it off with Monday Night Raw. Yeah, well, uh, my I enjoyed Raw pleasantly up until the last segment uh, at the very end, what they did, and this goes back to the Survivor Series. But, I mean, I loved how they started with the authority and kind of getting some more hate for Triple H and Stephanie with them losing and then having the surprise of Daniel Bryan coming out and he being in charge of the show. Oh, for all, I just, it made Raw very interesting and all the matches that he made, which let's kind of take a rundown. I know you can have your stats. At, so let me kind of look. You had Mark Henry Ryback, which was obviously a rematch from WrestleMania. You had an IC title match between Ambrose and Luke Harper, which that furthers the Dean Ambrose uh, white feud. Tag belts were on the line with Miz and Mizdale. You had Fandango, the revamp Fandango against Gabriel. You had Brie Bella and AJ, which I was stoked about that match because if you think who they're married to, it's CM Punk's and Dean Bryan's wife. And then you had Tyson Kidd and Natalya against the Bunny and stuff. And then you had Cena and Dolph against Rollins and J and J Security, which was hilarious. So I enjoyed Raw, like I said, up into the final segment. I'll kind of give your thoughts, and then I'll kind of talk about the very last thing that happened on Raw before we move on to Impact. Well, I would say short and sweet. A uh, whole lot of rematches, whether it's titles or whatnot. I mean, a whole lot of rematches. Especially the IC belt, you know, with a guy from the Wide family versus a guy from the Shield. That was a little bit intriguing, I, w- I will have to say. But the handicap main event, strange. But the ending, to, the ending to everything with the three main guys in the ring was, well, stunning. But we'll see how it goes, especially with the <clears throat> anonymous Raw GM. Yeah, and since you mentioned the anonymous Raw GM... That, to me, killed their momentum. And this, I'm going to kind of, I'm trying to find the right word here, but kind of piggyback off our first segment of Survivor Series. The whole, like I said, I wasn't necessarily upset with the whole team saying and stuff like that because then you don't have to fire anybody. You don't have to come up with the storyline and stuff like that. But the whole intrigue of the whole Cena team winning was, in terms of story and the plot, uh, going forward was who is going to be running raw who's going to be in charge and to me that was the whole drawing power of team Santa winning and to me they killed their momentum when they did the whole anonymous raw gm because one especially we, we revealed an anonymous raw gm to be hornswoggle so you're going back to a failed experiment that was annoying a lot of people so to me i didn't like that to me it was stupid they should have left it alone now if they wanted to do something like that they should have waited a month before they did it because you kill really the momentum you had going ang uh forward from survivor series so to me that was kind of stupid well, let's well agree, but let's get on down to Impact Wrestling. Um, the Thanksgiving Throwdown, which you can see on YouTube on a TNA Impact Wrestling's page on YouTube, pretty much a throwback of the days of old, in my opinion. But let's get the old opinion first before 
we shoot it on back to cornbread. So, Red Man, hit me with your opinion. Well, I mean, I liked it that although we don't have Impact and we're going to kind of discuss Impact's future in the next segment, kind of a teaser there for you. Teaser. Er, but I enjoyed that they did do a YouTube special uh, that they broke into three parts, and like you mentioned, it being on their YouTube page. Uh, and they did the Turkey Bowl, which was pretty much an Impact tradition when they were on Thursday nights. They always would have a match to where you could win so much money and the loser had to wear the turkey suit. So, I mean, I always enjoyed that, and I'm glad that they recognize their history and heritage of Thanksgiving and doing the turkey uh, suit uh, and stuff like that. So it was something I always enjoyed. And I'm trying to think of what my favorite turkey ball was. I enjoyed the one where AJ Styles had to wear it because that was kind of funny. You had Kurt Angle in the whole uh, Angle dress uh, as, yeah, a Puritan. as a Puritan. So, I mean, that was a good moment. There was a lot of good moments in turkey ball. And, I mean, I think uh, – we had Norman Dewey last year against the Bromans, and didn't the Bromans lose, if memory serves me correct? No, Bromans won. They, uh, they won, okay. So, yeah, Norv and Dewey had to wear it, and they kind of rocked it out. So, I mean, that was... And they were happy about the turkey suit. They were happy. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of great moments. I don't think you really ever have a bad moment when it comes to the turkey bowl. No, but... I... I mean, turkey bowl stuff, hilarious. The return of Rudy Charles the year before. Hilarious return of Rudy Charles with the turkey suit, nonetheless. Yeah. Hilarious stuff. But I have to say my favorite one has to be that very first one, 2007. But look at what you had in that match of 2007. You had AJ Styles, Triple Crown winner. You had Chris Saban, Triple Crown winner. Samoa Joe, Triple Crown winner. Three guys in that one ring with the winner getting 25 grand, the loser wearing the turkey suit. But the fact that you decided to put three X Division competitors in there, that really made it worth it. I, that was the one match I would literally go, go back and watch from 2007. That was awesome, in my opinion. I, I loved it. But Turkey Bowl, if I really have to say it was my favorite one, the fact that Awesome Kong was at the dinner table. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, that, that's funny to have Awesome Kong there. And Karen and Karen Angle, now Jarrett, <laughs> dressed in that little outfit. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, I need my bonnet for that one. Yeah. So you want to get to SmackDown before we uh, go to... SmackDown! You can look that up in Webster's. Yes, it's official word in Webster's Dictionary. The last few years it's let's, been added. So you Let's kinda, get it on now, SmackDown. Yeah. Well, I mean, I enjoyed SmackDown, and, uh, and have Daniel Bryan continue to run the show uh, on SmackDown was very good. Uh, we got the fallout from Raw with Rusev having to defend the U.S. title belt in a battle role, which was very good it's and entertaining. for Rusev, though. Yeah. Uh, he uh, is one of probably the few people, if not the only person, We'll have to double check our stats. I think he's the only one to retain. To retain the the title in a better role because that's very difficult to do. You had Emma Brie Bella. um, It was okay. It gives Nikki something to do. Well, take this Nikki Bella. Yeah, Nikki Bella. The Nikki Bella. I stand corrected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heineken, on that. Right back, Seth Rollins, which was an interesting booking. And we also had the debut of the New Day. They kind of surprised us. It's supposed to be on Raw this next uh, week. Uh, But they fought Slater Gator and Curtis Axel, and they picked up a win. And then you had Harper and Dolph in the main event, and Dolph winning by countout, if I remember correctly, which was it was an okay match, not bad. And Dolph Ziggler was always a good worker. So kind of what's your thoughts on SmackDown, Mr. Uh, Heineken? Well, um, <laughs> the battle rule, oh, my goodness. Battle rule, it was the funniest, especially after Miz got eliminated. Then Sandow jerked himself up and threw himself over the top rope. Gosh, best moment in SmackDown right there. Miz Dow eliminated himself from the Battle Royal. Otherwise, it was history making. But New Day, oh, jeez. I have to admit, I've had my skepticism about this, this trio. But after watching their in-ring work, they literally upped their game than what they've done before. So I have to give them props in. Of course, no surprise for Dolphin Luke Harper because Luke Harper's becoming a big time money player, in my opinion. You know, no, a lot of a lot of announcers and a lot of guys will always say, Hey, who would you invest stock in? Dolph 
or Luke Harper. It's an absolute virtual tie for me. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Luke Harper is going to have a bright future, but I think Dolph is ready to get back in that main event picture like he was a couple of years ago. I, I oh, think he'll take a step higher. Yeah, I think he's ready to be that WWE World Heavyweight Champion and really be the face of the company. Now, it may not be uh, any time in the next few months, obviously, but I mean, probably by the end of the next year, here, or even the next one, 2016, you can see Dolph Ziggler holding the WWE World Heavyweight title. They might I disband it, which I hope they don't do, because I like having the one champion. Although, with it being Brock Lesnar, two belts would have been more beneficial if you're not going to have a champion that's there. But I think we talked about that at Ad Nauseum. So, is there anything else you want to add uh, well, uh, before we go to uh, commercial break well, and go to our question segments? Well, technically, you got to give Rusev some props, but... Um I, I gotta I gotta give I gotta give a little shout out to the to WWE Divas. As far as their in ring work is concerned, they have really, really upped their game. So mad props. Keep keep the momentum going, WWE Divas. Keep it going. Okay, and with that we'll go to a quick commercial break and then we'll go to our question segments and we'll be right back after this short commercial break. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Honigan. And I'm Robert Red, And we are the host of the Power of Pro Wrestling Podcast, PPWP. The wrestling podcast for the wrestling fans. We're currently looking for sponsors. If you or your business is interested in sponsorship for this podcast, you can contact us via email at jonesboroughwrestling at gmail.com. That's jonesboroughwrestling at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. So just chill out, enjoy the show, and thanks. Hello everyone, this is Robert Red. I'm Chris Honigan. And, th- and our show can be heard on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. Download the free app today. You can listen anytime and anywhere. Stitcher is a award winning free app that lets you listen to all your favorite shows. Plus, discover from 20,000 news, entertainment, and sports shows. You can even create custom playlists. Over 20,000 shows to discover. You can rate and review the show on Stitcher. Also available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. And along with that is in 4 million car dashboards. And it's on demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, and no wasted memory. Stream your favorite podcasts. Well, if you don't have Stitcher, you can download it free today at Stitcher.com or in your app store. And welcome back to the Power of Pro Wrestling Podcast, the podcast for the wrestling fan. I'm Cornbread Chris Honigan. And I'm Robert Red. And as we mentioned earlier, normally this would be the second segment of our show, but guess what? We might as well save the best for last. Let's kick it off with this topic. More headlines. Sting this past Sunday at WWE Survivor Series pay-per-view made his WWE television debut. This is about the very first time ever that Sting has literally debuted for WWE. Here's the question. Not if, but when Sting steps into the ring, who should his first, very first opponent be? Well, I mean, I've said this uh, off uh, the podcast and stuff like this, but his first opponent, and this is a dream match that I've been wanting to see for a while, is the man I have on my wall uh, up here, The Undertaker. Because, and they're even on the Monday Night War series, if you watch it on the WWE Network, that's on, for the, what price, Mr. Heineken? Oh, nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. as WWE keeps reminding us, is they're going to be talking about the foundations of war, and it's Undertaker being loyal to WWE, A, and being their franchise player, Sting being loyal to WCW, and being their franchise player. So to me, a, even with the series of the Monday Night War, that's why I think Sting's first opponent should be The Undertaker, because you're really almost bringing back that war of WCW and Sting and WWF The Undertaker, and you can kind of have that battle back and forth. And all, even though The Undertaker got beat by Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30, A... A, still, this match isn't about the streak. It never was, and it never will be, a Sting versus Undertaker. So, really, to me, that should be his first opponent, should be Undertaker. I would call, I would call this a battle of the franchise players, in my opinion. No, all due respect to Shane Douglas, I will call this the battle of um, franchise players, in my opinion. I will do a slight 25% for CM Punk. Just for the clashing of styles, what would what would it be like for, for Sting to be in the ring with CM Punk? Just for clashing of styles. Because I know for that, that would be a drawing match. But I'm with you 
on Undertaker because you because you want to know the craziest thing is the last time those two appeared in the same company on a pay per view, July 7, 1990, the Great American Bash in Baltimore. Undertaker, then known as Me Mark Callis, challenged Luger for the U.S. title, and Sting challenged Fur for the world title. And we all know how that happened. So I would say Battle of the Franchise Players. 75, if not 80, probably 80, close to 90%. I would say Sting versus Undertaker, but I say it should happen at a WrestleMania. Yeah, and that's definitely a, I'm in agreement with there. This needs to be a WrestleMania match because this is a match, it's a dream match, and it needs to be in front of a large crowd. So 31 at the Levi Stadium wouldn't mm-hmm. be bad, but even having it in Cowboy Stadium at 32, yes, it would be good, but I, I wouldn't want to wait an entire year for that. So I would hope that they would do it at... San Francisco, WrestleMania 31. So that's kind of my thoughts and opinions on that. Well, moving on, and we're sticking with the topic of WWE. In the interest of boosting competition, or lack thereof, in the sports compartment, SmackDown will be moving back to Thursday nights. It was in August of 1999 when they had originally started on Thursday nights. Now, with a possible jump back to Thursday nights, just for competition purposes with ESPN, CBS, and NFL Network. Here's the question. SmackDown's move back to Thursday nights. Robert, do you see this as a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I mean, to me, they're going back to their the roots and stuff, like you mentioned, in August of 99 when it debuted on UPN at the time. It was a Thursday night program, and there wasn't really a whole lot going on on Thursday night. So at that time, it wasn't a bad thing. And, and since then, uh, uh, in later years, they moved to Friday night SmackDown. And to me, I enjoyed that move because it gave you something to watch at the end of the week. It gave you that Friday night program, and especially uh, I was a kid at the time, uh, not quite an adult yet, so... Oh, being off from school, and then Friday night, it being the weekend, you get to watch wrestling, you get all hyped up about it, so I enjoyed SmackDown on Friday night. Now, moving back to Thursday nights, I'm not really a big fan of because there's a lot of stuff on Thursday night. You've got the NFL that's airing on Thursday night. So, with that competition, I don't feel that going back to Thursday nights is necessarily a good thing, and we kind of discussed this with TNA moving to Wednesday nights, which I'm glad that they were smart enough to move knowing WWE probably in the future was going to move to Thursday nights. So I'm not necessarily in favor for the move because I enjoy them on Friday nights and getting to watch it on the Friday night and you've got the weekend to kind of talk about it. And to me, it being on Friday night, you're closer to the pay-per-view, so you don't have to wait three days for the pay-per-view. It's only a couple of days. So I really am not a big fan of them moving to Thursday nights, although I understand that there are reasons for them doing that. They feel they're going to get a better demographic. A lot more people are going to watch on Thursday, whereas on Friday there's like local football games and stuff like that that might draw people away that they might not watch the show. So I understand why they're doing it. I'm just not a big fan or in favor of them really moving back to Thursday. Well, I would say going back to your roots, you know, sometimes it could be a bad thing. Especially, you know, if you're the number one show on Safa. But to increase, and you made the key point there, get people to watch. That's the that's the ultimate key point. You have more access and more availability to Safa than you do to the NFL Network. More viewers will tune in to Safa way more than the NFL Network. So if you really want to up competition, which is technically what this is, especially with the Universal HD Networks, I have to say it's a good thing because now, you know, you don't have to worry about CBS in your back pocket. You only got two lesser evils to worry about. ESPN with their programming as far as college football, as far as college basketball is concerned, and NFL Network, as you mentioned. So I would say competition is always better, just like it was Monday nights when there was competition. So I would, so I would, I was, I would kind of have to fifty fifty there. As we move on and stick on to switching of networks, TNA Wrestling or Impact Wrestling has decided to end their nine year run on Spike TV. News came early in November that. TNA will be moving to Destination America, which is a 
Prime Network or one of the networks of the Discovery Channel. Here's a question. TNA, this is more TNA's third network, third cable network that they have been on since 2002 when they started on pay-per-view and 2004 when they started on national television. The move to Destination America for Impact Wrestling. Good move or bad move? Now, uh, for me, uh, in this one, going back to SmackDown, I talked about the move wasn't good for them moving to Thursday nights from Friday nights. Uh, it's obviously, I, I'm going to play both sides of the fence here. It's a, a bad move for them moving to Destination America just because the availability of Destination America versus Spike TV, you're actually losing the potential viewerships because the channel is just not carried as widely as Spike TV. So to me, that is a bad move for them moving to Destination America. But on the flip side, if you really look at it, I don't want them to be WCW and be left without a TV deal and the company got out of business because there's still a lot of good talent there. They may have been mismanaged and stuff like that, but you have Samoa Joe, Austin Aries, Bobby Roode, and I could keep going on and on and on and on, and I'm not trying to slide anyone if I didn't mention your name, and, but there's a lot of great talent there, and I want to see TNA continue. I don't want to see it being the same fate as WCW because I kind of see them as the spiritual successor to WCW, that they are in a lot of ways the new WCW. So them having a television deal regardless if it's less viewership at least you're going to get to stay on tv and people are going to keep their jobs and you won't go out of business so i understand why uh they're moving to destination america it is sad that they aren't going to make 10 years of spike but them having a tv deal if it's going to keep them afloat oh is a good thing in my opinion normally i would say this would be a bad move for tna to leave to leave spike tv go destination america but the only reason I cannot say that's a bad move is for this reason. And we both live in Sudden Link territory, and we both know this. Viacom networks are being dropped from a lot of cable systems. And get and you and you really want some good good stuff. Here's some more good stuff. When it when the World Poker Tour debuted on the Travel Channel. Travel Channel wasn't hardly watched by anybody. But when they made that move, they gained a whole lot of viewership. Now, how in the world does this relate to TNA in this case? In 2013, Spike TV had 97, or pretty much 97.6 million homes that they were allowed into compared to Destination America's 59.6. That's last year's. The stats have completely flip-flopped. Now, not many homes are accepting Spike as much as there are Destination America. So I will have to give this a positive, good move for TNA because, as you said, it's all about staying on television. And on the next podcast, we will discuss wrestling on television compared to net, compared to radio. We will discuss that the next podcast. Uh, podcast and we hope you be right here with us yeah and i do want to thank you guys for joining us that's all the time we have for this podcast uh for chris heineken this is robert red and i do want to thank you for joining us for the power of pro wrestling podcast See ya! we'll catch you later